In this live self-defense training video, you're gonna discover how to generate more power, knockout power, which you be able to stop somebody when they're attacking you for self-defense. So you're gonna generate knockout power in three basic ways, and I'm gonna give you some tools that you can use to increase your power beyond that. The first way is going to be extension, proper extension of your strike. Now your strike can be a punch, your strike can be your palm strike, the strike could be an elbow, you can use your knee, you can use your feet, you smash with your head, but the strike for self-defense has to fully extend. So if this is, the say the target here is the bad guy, is the threat, being able to punch and stopping before you've done a full extension will not generate enough power. So I want you to have knockout power. First thing you're gonna do is full extension. So when you practice punching, practice punching and turning the knuckle, the little pinky knuckle all the way over and up. Hello, George, hello, Garen. But punching with a full extension, if you practice palm strikes, pull the fingers back, make sure you're hitting with this hard part of the hand, that's another part of knockout power, is hitting with the proper technique. Hit with the knuckles on the fist, hit with this hard bony structure in your hand for the palm strike. Hello, sand dude. So when you practice your palm strike, get that full extension of your arm, push through, get greater reach, but create some knockout power. When you're using your elbow strike, you wanna get this tight, tucked into your body, and turning through your hips and shoulders, but also pushing forward and extending from your body. Hitting through the target, Garen says. So coming forward and striking through the target. And striking through the target, as Garen's talking about here, if we're talking about this elbow, that would be hitting here, but not stopping here. Hello, Matthew. But pushing through and going through the jaw, through the temple for self-defense. On the punch, going through his face, going through his solar plexus, into the back of his body, into the spine, coming out the backside. So that full extension of the arm is number one. The tip for the punch is turn it over. For the palm strike, pull the fingers back, expose this hard bony part, make sure you get a full extension on your elbow. And for the elbow, keep it tight to the body, coming through here, coming up here. This has to be super tight. You also get the added bonus of protecting your head. If you're bringing it up and down over top, extending not just the turning motion, but also pushing away from your body to go into the target. If you've ever done elbow strikes on a bag and they don't feel powerful, it's because you're probably just wiping your elbow across the bag. You also have to move in, pushing away from your body while keeping your hand close so you have that powerful striking motion coming for those elbow strikes. So number one is full extension. Number two, to generate knockout power, stopping power for self-defense, how to hit somebody harder and faster for self-defense, is going to be extending or turning the shoulders and hips, rotation of the shoulders and hips. So pull your stomach up and in as you practice. Drop your chin, always keep your chin tucked. You open your chin up, you're gonna get knocked out. So drop your chin, practice the punch or the palm strike, and turning the shoulders and hips. Now, if you just do an arm punch, the muscles here in your arm extending all the way properly, like we talked about first tip, but there's no rotation in your shoulder, you're limited in how far your punch will go. Just by turning the shoulders and the hips, you now engage all the muscles in your core, in the front and the back, you engage all the muscles in your powerful legs. Coming off of the floor, and pushing, striking, palm strike, elbow strike, that rotation in the shoulders and hips, now accelerate both the power and the speed. So you're hitting harder, you're hitting a lot faster. This is how you get knockout power. I was holding mitts the other night for a gentleman who had, uh, cause he stopped by, he said, hey, you know, I've done martial arts for 15 years, I've done the Krav Maga for 15 years. I said, come on in, I can run some mitts, we can work on your footwork, maybe I can help you a little bit. And I started holding targets and he hits with so much good power. He's a much older gentleman, age is just a number, much older than I am, but he still has knockout power. Age doesn't matter, proper technique matters, understanding full extension and rotation. And so he doesn't have the speed of his youth. He doesn't have the strength and the muscle of his youth, but he does have knockout power. And that's because he's doing these three things. So number one is that extension. Number two is rotation through the shoulders and hips. Pull your stomach tight, abs up and in, tuck the chin and practice. Turning shoulders and hips while you extend all the way three, or through. Number three is going to be moving your feet. One of my favorite sayings, for a short period of time, I went to a Quaker college 
And the funny joke is that Quakers are pacifists. And they have a saying, pray and move your feet, which I think is a brilliant saying. Instead of just praying and waiting, pray and then get up and start moving. Make things happen. Pray and move your feet, right? God helps those who help themselves. Now, this isn't a full application because obviously this is not being a pacifist. This is the opposite. This is protecting yourself, stopping violence with violence. The third tip is move your feet. Stepping in, you can take that small step with the front foot. You can see it in the mirror back there. You can move your body. You can lean in with your strike, but you want to get your body in motion so that when you strike, you have real knockout power, stopping power, in the fight power by extending the arm, turning the shoulders and hips, and then moving your body forward, driving your whole body right through his body, right through his face, through his spine for self-defense, through his neck, palm strike, punch, or elbow. It doesn't matter what your technique is. Kick. If you want to throw the kick to the shin or bring it down with the elliptical kick into his ankle or kick him in the stomach, it's the same thing. You have to extend the leg, rotate through the, sh the hips and the shoulders, and you have to move your body in through the target. Drive through to the other side, right? So those three basic tips, extension, rotation, and acceleration, moving the body, coming forward. That speed up is going to stop him in his tracks. It's gonna drop him to the floor when you make contact with the chin or an elbow to the side of the face or to the jaw or that palm strike right through his, his nose. Now, you can accelerate or increase your speed with these types of things. Hello, Ronnie, it's good to see you. Oh, I wanted to make a quick announcement. I am, thanks Joey, Joey says you're the best. I am starting a new program. I need to have more students and I'm not getting a lot of students here in person, which is okay for me because I prefer to work with you and, and work with or, or each other online. So I'm going to have a new program where you can sign up and send me, you, can get, you still get all the training for free. I'm gonna put all the videos on here, everything I know, anything I can come up with is gonna be here for free. Hello, George. Yeah, George says, take advantage of your assets, long arms and legs, use what you have. Age is just a number. But we're gonna be doing, um, thank you, G. Hayes. We're, we're gonna, so we're gonna have a, uh, an online dojo and you will be invited to join as a member. It's not gonna be very expensive, but it's gonna give you the opportunity to send me your videos. I can give you a little bit of feedback, send them back, and hopefully that helps. I have a friend who golfs a lot and does a lot of golfing programs. We've been looking at that, and it seems like it's very effective. He has coaches online, and so this program is gonna be like that. You can get all the information free. I will always teach for free and give it out there for free, but if you want my personal feedback for a small fee and like a monthly membership, you'll have access. It'll be a little bit different than the one that's here. I appreciate the Patreon and I appreciate the YouTube, but they take such a high percentage, <laughs> they take almost half, and it's, it's, it, it, it takes away the ability for me to pay my bills. So it's just a way for me to get the bills paid here, keep the lights on, literally. But I wanted to show you these bands, now that my commercial's over, I'm not very good at that, so I appreciate your patience with me. But I have three sides. Yeah, Joey says, love to join. Joey, I'd love to have you. Three sizes, the smallest will always be the least resistance. These are resistance bands. I put a link below if you wanna see, um, you'll see, and it says right on the, if you, even if you just go to the link and look at the picture, it'll show you basically how much pounds of resistance you're getting. So you get, uh, George says he's interested, you get these bands and you're going to attach them to an anchor. Now you don't have to have one of these punching bags. You can make an anchor just about anywhere, around a doorknob, around the foot of the table, anything that's not gonna move. Make sure it's not gonna move, you're not gonna rip it across the room. But when you put your anchor there, you then have resistance, and when you put your hand through the band and you practice your punching strike or your palm strike or even your elbow strike, you will be able to generate now more power. So having resistance, doing it slowly. Yeah, George says he can't find a sparring partner. That's true for a lot of us. It's hard for me. I've been making these videos hoping that I'll get somebody who comes in and say, hey, and I've asked so many people, would you be in a video with me so I can demonstrate some of these techniques in person to show how they work? Because we don't do a lot of uh, fancy joint manipulation, pressure points, takedowns and stuff. We can, but it doesn't really make sense if I'm not showing you how to do that on a partner. Plus, I think effective, powerful self-defense is simple, immediate, direct, and explosive, right? Close with and destroy, violence of action, those basic principles. 
But if you need more power, you go to a, a little bit more resistance, a little bit bigger band. And I always suggest starting with the lightest band first and you go slow. I like to do five of these slow and then five medium speed and then five all out, right? You do the first five slow and the medium to warm up to make sure everything's safe before you start to throw it. And then proper technique. Think about stomach, think about the process. Stomach up and in, abs tight, drop the chin. Turn your shoulders and hips. Add that front step. Add your breath. You start to immediately increase your power. Now these are also great for ripping power because sometimes self-defense is reaching out and snatching somebody in while you throw the elbow or you throw this elbow up or you're pulling them out of the way. Maybe they're grabbing somebody else. You need to intervene. Maybe they're touching a loved one. They're touching your kid or your grandchild and you have to snatch them out, right? So having this anchor opposite foot forward, turning and the palm comes up, squeeze the arm at the back. And this isn't to look good in mu for muscles. It's for actual muscle power that allows you uh, st stopping power, be able to knock them out, right? Yeah, George says you like the feedback. George, I found that when I work with people online, they make the most progress and they outgrow me when I can give them feedback. And it's really simple. I give you a link, you drop in your video, I watch it, and then while the video is playing, at different points, I can make the criticism. So when you watch it back or the feedback, if you want to call it criticism, and it, then you, you see, hey, oh, I didn't think of that or I didn't see that because you don't always see your own. That's why I still have coaches. I have coaches for everything I do. From here, we have a very famous sports athlete, one of the greatest of all time. I can't say his name, but one of the greatest of all time. His kids go to the school down the street where I'm about to go teach. And he pulls up every once in a while in one of his giant uh, sports cars and um, I, I've watched his life story as a lot of us have I can't, again I'm not going to say his name but it always occurs to me that every aspect of his game the reason he was the top the pinnacle and still considered one of the greatest of all time in his sport is he has a coach for every aspect of his game so when he got better he invested in more coaching not less and I think that's the key to life pray and move your feet and get a good coach so you can also then put your body into the band and practice your footwork. I think being able to move forward, move back, moving side to side. If I can face you a little bit, I get some resistance here, coming in, coming back. And then one of the best things you can do as you get older is really work on your footwork, being hard to hit, making it hard for them to hurt you because you're not there or when they do hit you, you know how to move with it right? And it becomes a glancing blow. And then you come back with a knockout power, knockout strike. You can do all that with a simple resistance band. And again, the links below, if you want to see those, you're asking me all the time. I found a really cool set. I just ordered a set that I'm going to add to the training here because we use them in the class all the time. I like them better than weights. Someone asked me recently, do I work out? I get to go to the gym once every other week now. And it's usually maybe 25, 30 minutes. And I really literally go, go through, I do a simple warm up, and then I do a couple of machines. And I only go there because it breaks up the monotony. But the most training that I do are with these bands. You use these kind of bands to increase knockout power. This is one of my favorites of all time. Super simple. I've been doing this one for years. Put your elbows in it, bend, and then explode up. Add that hard exhale and people don't understand the reason that martial artists have always yelled and now you hear other athletes do it when they're playing tennis you even hear a golfer like um, Tiger Woods who lives down the street that's not who comes to the school by the way but Tiger Woods when he hits it there's that exhale and that exhale when you punch even the yell the power yell that accelerates everything because it squeezes all the muscles in here and it tightens everything up so that on impact you're hitting with so much speed and power so you want to get knockout power add that breath either palm strike elbow strike uh, punch in the face and learn how to move practice your simple stepping to the side and stepping back your feet never can cross they can never cross going forward and coming back forward and back side to side 
forward, back, put the band on, side to side. When you get better, you can make it a little bit more of a sliding motion, and then you can do it more of a bouncing motion. But if you can't bounce, because age is just a number, but we have to recognize that <laughs> you get older and older and older, I don't move the way I used to move, but I can still move to the side. A step is better than standing still. There's nothing wrong with a step. If you can't jump, step. And the way to increase the speed of getting out of the way is the same way you increase the speed of knocking someone out. And that is when you go to the right, push off of the left foot. When you go back to the left, push off of the right foot. When you go forward, push off the back foot. When you go backward, push off the front foot. Then you can practice going forward, punch. Going backward, punch. Going to the side, punch or elbow or palm strike. Just remember, when you're in motion, you don't have as much power as when your feet are planted. So you want real knockout power? Don't punch while you're moving. You punch while you're uh, grounded. And the only exception is that explosive push when you come forward. But if you're moving all around and you're boxing, you're not very powerful. You want to pop, 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 then move, pop, 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 then move, pop, 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 then move. And then the last thing I'll say about increasing speed, knockout power, how to get faster, how to get stronger for self-defense is you have to, in your head, flip a switch. And that's, I don't care what you call it, call it lightning speed or whatever, blazing speed, you flip that switch. And then part of it is just a mental thought to go faster, to push faster. A lot of times we don't come out of our comfort zone. And so it feels like, you know, we stay here. This feels good, this feels easy. You gotta sometimes get winded. You have to push yourself. You have to go really, really fast. Awkward Cat, glad to see you. Sorry you came in at the very end, but please go back and watch again. I would like for all of you to, whether you're watching it live or not live, put in the comment section if you were to join as a member. And I'm not gonna assume that you would, but if you wanted to and you wanted to join a different platform, I'm gonna have a website. It'll be the pasquinale.com website. You go there, you would be a member. All the information is free. But if you wanted to send me a video and have me critique, what would it be on? Would it be on traditional martial arts? Are you interested in the weapons? Are you interested in the self-defense? Are you interested in fitness or whatever? Just put that in the comment section so that I can get that feedback as we put it together. Thanks, Kate, uh, Pete. Thanks so much for being here. Pete says great stuff. Um, and then we'll start to, to get it going. Uh, like I said, all the information will always be for free. You'll always get that. But if you wanted my feedback, I'd love to give that. I just have to charge a little bit for it. And then, uh, yeah, Aaron says likely self-defense. That allows me to pay for this place because it doesn't, it's not, um, I'm not breaking even, <laughs> just be honest. And it's, it's, you know, it's funny. I've told this story many times, I know you've heard it. I opened the school here in, after having a successful school for almost 30 years in Ohio, I moved to Florida, South Florida, to be closer to my wife's family so our kids could be down here. It's beautiful down here. It's not gray and, and, and cold. It's very sunny and, and, uh, and warm every day. But um, I had to start over, and I started over the week of COVID. So COVID was coming, coming. I finally got all my permits. I got everything painted. I got the mats down. I opened the doors, and the next day, the country shut down. And then we sat empty for months. And I've been trying to uh, dig out of that hole ever since. So, uh, and then the, the industry just has, and, and, and we're okay. I mean, we've, we've done well. We, we, we can uh, survive but it's just that surviving. I wanna get back to the other side of it where I can provide as much value to others. Um, uh, no, I was never in DC. Uh, George says, well, wasn't I in DC for a while? I love DC, I visit uh, as much as I can, but, but I, was never, I was never in DC. I have a lot of doppelgangers. People tell me all the time, I saw a guy, I know it's you. I'm like, no, no, that wasn't me. That was the guy that looks like me. But you guys have been awesome, and I will see you in just a little bit. Thank you.